Our son was dying, see? Well, not really dying, but rather changing, transforming. It was about to run out of hydrogen so it would become a red giant. We realized it. We were not that technologically challenged. We had stargazing, astronomy, you call it. We had physics. We had chemistry. We knew. The signs were there. Sure, we hadn't achieved prolonged crude spaceflight, nor FTL, but we had our share of satellites and space telescopes, had sent probes to other worlds in our system. We were thoroughly mapping the other moons that orbited Krumbrucht, as our own home did. What I'm trying to say is that we weren't underdeveloped, not technologically, nor as a society, as some of the more advanced species on the Galactic Council seem to think of us, because we're the newcomers. So, as I was saying, we realized our sun was an old star, and that the time for it to turn into a red giant was coming. Since we orbited a gas giant, we were far enough as to be spared the expansion of our star and the utter destruction of the inner planets. What awaited us was a long, protracted extinction, as the increased radiation output and heat from the star would literally bake our planet as it peeled away the outer layers of crumb burked, leaving a much smaller gas planet. We were totally at a loss, initially. Plans were made, a huge ship was built, part space station, part ark. Things came to head when the riot started. Not all of us were to board the ark. More were planned and being constructed, but no one knew if we had enough time a lot of us, Kirthum, thought we only had this one chance. The elder Kirthum took a moment to regard his guest. It was a hairless biped, moderate height but slender build, slightly disproportionate head, but that was a common trait with his species, the minders, as they called themselves. They took pride in scientific advancement and knowledge, and in their society they were considered aspirants until they've earned the equivalent of two doctoral degrees, PhDs, or one postdoctoral degree, using the human's terms. The young aspiring Minder could barely believe his luck. He managed to score an interview with the actual last living witness of the salvation of the Karthum, as the academic circles called it. The scientific community was aware of the change of the star. They had looked on with their telescopes and their radio telescopes, somehow missing the system held an inhabited planet, with a whole civilization developing on it and said people were on the brink of extinction because of an astronomical event, and they lacked the technology to escape far enough, or fast enough. But seemingly out of nowhere, the star stabilized and didn't turn into a red giant. The only plausible and logical explanation was outside intervention. But who did it? The elder species denied intervention. Besides, they were all located on the opposite side of the galaxy. No council species ever claimed responsibility for it. The Kurthum were conspicuously silent about the whole affair. The most anyone had ever got from them was the confirmation that they were saved, but they wouldn't betray the identity of their benefactor. They'd sworn silence. As the elderly Kurthum took a few seconds of pause, it was clear that he remembered too well those events. That was the whole point of the interview, the young aspiring minder reminded himself. Where were we? Oh yes, the riots, the elder said, and continued. So, a lot of us rioted and fought each other and even killed each other, fighting for the remaining places on the first arc. We were on the far side of our orbit, with Crumb Burked eclipsing our sun when the heavy solar flaring started the gas giant taking the full brunt of it, shielding us, as had happened countless times throughout our history. Evolving on a tidally locked moon of a gas giant has some advantages. Our largest cities were on the limited patch of dusk, the area that seldom got any sunshine. But when the death throes of our stars started, thousands of millions flocked to that area, adding to the rioting and creating a crisis. So, imagine our dismay when the scientists discovered some strange things on the system's edge. Later, we learned it was a small fleet of spaceships. But at the time, no way of accurately knowing what it was. It only added to the panic. Especially when we detected that an absurdly large object left formation and headed towards our sun. 
The other ships stayed put. We didn't know what to make of it, it was chaotic. The crew of the first arc scrambled and launched, not waiting to check if they were full to capacity. For the rest of us planet side, we only could watch and wait. And we did. Some weeks passed, and the large thing was closer and closer to our sun. A collective gasp was heard when our instruments detected that it had hit the star. No material known to us could withstand the heat in proximity of our star, let alone actually impacting it. We expected the worst. Words can't properly convey the astonishment and relief we felt when, a couple days later, our sun stabilized. Somehow that thing had halted the evolution of our yellow sun, the system had been spared. Some more days after our stargazers confirmed the findings, we realized two things. First, that the strange formation at our system's edge had vanished. We could only find some radiation signature where they had been, detected by our long-range satellites. Secondly, one of said satellites was missing. The elder paused again, and the young aspiring Minda could barely contain its excitement. This was it, the culmination, the final point in his post-doctorate thesis. Somehow he managed to find a Karathum willing to talk about the salvation of his species. Which was weird because of the years of silence, he would ask later. But now, the secret was about to come to light. Some months passed, we gave up on ever knowing what that object even was and what had happened to our satellite. And that's when we met them. Actually, they introduced themselves to us and told us that they came to apologize. They said they'd thought ours was an uninhabited system. We had such a sparse space presence at the time, you see. And the background radiation from Krumberg had somehow obscured their sensors and the signs of our presence. They said they were explorers and scientists from a planet in a standard system. Far from us, mind you, we later learned they lived on the far outer side of what they called the Orion Arm of our galaxy. Incidentally, we lived on the inner side of the same arm. It was through them we learned of the galactic community that they all thought ours was an unpopulated area, with unstable stars and low probability of having planets capable of developing life, that they arrived in our system by chance, looking for a yellow star that was on the early stages of transformation into a red, because they wanted to do a field experiment. Uh, an experiment? The young aspirant couldn't help but ask, How? Oh, the technical details are way beyond my education, the elder said. But in a nutshell, these aliens had developed some heavy elements on a space lab of theirs, in a stable point between their planet and their single moon. They thought it could be used to stabilize the output of a star, see? That's why they were seeking for star experiencing instability. Finding us was more about sheer luck than actually trying to make contact with a new species, the elder chuckled. And since they felt that messing with our star without proper authorization was a breach in protocol and a lack of courtesy, as an apology, they helped us advance our technology, gave us the first hints into FTL travel and how to build colonies in the planets of our system, also told us what to do in order to be discovered by the rest of the galactic community. They only ever asked of us to keep it a secret, and we vowed to do so. Uh, but why? Why wouldn't such magnanimous beings want to take credit? The aspirant asked again, interrupting. Well, Sonny, they said it would be troublesome for them. That the elder races of your council may take offense. This discovery was even beyond them, and they were one of the younger species, still bearing the moniker of newcomer. But now I'm the last living Kurthum from that time, and when we swore silence, they said that after the last surviving witness had died, they would leave in our hands to keep or reveal the secret, as probably enough time would have passed. We're a very long-lived species, after all. The Elder chuckled again. And then, I learned about you, my young friend. See, as the government realized I was the last living witness, I was given the choice to either talk with someone of my own choosing, or the government would release an official statement after my death. And I'd rather be remembered on a history book. That's why we're having this conversation. The That's all well and good, sir, the aspiring Minda said. But you still haven't answered the big question, who did it? And right, I haven't told yet. It was them, you know. Your people know them. 
It was those warm-blooded bipedal mammals from the third planet of Sol system, as they called it. The Earthlings. Wait, the young minder scientist couldn't even believe what he had just heard. Are you seriously telling me the humans did it?